Xbox and PlayStation have been battling it out with each other for over 20 years in the console wars. Nintendo is always there doing its own thing and owning a massive chunk of the console market, but for the longest time, if you were a console gamer, the one question you'd most certainly be asked was Xbox or PlayStation. But what were the best-selling games of the consoles during the outright war? Hello, it's the Dove to tell you the top selling of each Xbox and PlayStation console. Quick disclaimer, companies are under no obligation to report their sales numbers. Most of what you find as sales numbers are accompanied by the word estimate. So while I researched and verified my findings in multiple sources, there is always a possibility an unreported or underreported game could change some of these figures. Up until recently, Microsoft shared most of their numbers but have changed their tune, perhaps in light of their recent court case. So let's get started. PlayStation was first on the scene in 1994, getting an early jump on their Microsoft counterpart. The PlayStation was actually a result of a failed deal between Nintendo and Sony. There was a plan to add a CD drive to the Super Nintendo, and Sony was originally offered the contract. But extremely last minute, like as Sony was about to announce it to the world, Nintendo pulled out, leaving Sony pretty pissed off, and in this case, probably making the biggest blunder of Nintendo's history. When Sony came out with a more powerful CD game console, nerds like myself were drawn to the futuristic version of gaming. And one game nearly every console had was the original Gran Turismo. For its time, Gran Turismo was an ultra-realistic looking race game that blew Mario Kart out of the water in terms of graphics. A true version of a simulation racer, Gran Turismo drew players in with the vast roster of cars you could acquire and drive. And the simulation aspect of the game made more serious gamers have to focus and learn proper technique to win. And it eventually sold over 10 million units by the end of production. Xbox was Microsoft's answer to the gaming market. Released in 2001, the Xbox would take in its first attempt at consoles against Sega's Dreamcast, Nintendo's GameCube, and Sony's PlayStation 2. As the first American-made console since the Atari Jaguar, Xbox made a splash in the market with 24 million units sold. And if you owned an Xbox, there was a 1 in 4 chance you owned Halo 2. With over 8.5 million copies sold, it is no wonder this best-selling franchise led its way to a live-action streaming series for at least two seasons. Halo 2 was groundbreaking for many reasons. It was the online element of Halo 2 that made the game next level when it came to consoles. At the time, companies were still figuring out how exactly to handle slow speeds, lag, servers, the very basics we don't think much about today. The Xbox Live servers, for the most part, were able to withstand the influx of Master Chief lovers, and the series became a staple of Xbox for years to come. There were plenty of first-person shooters before Halo 2, but few had the intensity, lore, futuristic weapons, and quality graphics that Halo 2 brought to the table. Being able to sign on and play with your friends made it one of the best. And that's why it led all Xbox games with 8.5 million copies sold. Oh baby, does this next release make me miss the days of backwards compatibility. The PlayStation 2 released in 2000 and dominated the market after it sold a whopping 155 million units in its life cycle. It is currently the best-selling console of all time, and with the current trend in consoles, might be the GOAT after it's all said and done. This early 2000s console had over 4,000 titles to play without including the backwards compatibility games. The very best-selling game among them was Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It finally brought the West Coast scenery and feel to the 3D version of the series. San Andreas expanded on the success of GTA 3 and Grand Theft Auto Vice City and doubled down on the open world aspect with 14 square kilometers of open world bliss available. That's over four times the size of either of its predecessors. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was also filled with so many extra mini games. From flying the worst remote plane ever while David Cross verbally abuses you, to betting on dog races, there was just a catalog of things to do. 
The story of CJ sold over 17 million copies on the PlayStation 2 alone, and 27 million overall before any remasters. In order to get a jumpstart on the seventh generation of consoles, Xbox 360 was released in 2005. The 360 helped establish Xbox as a major presence in the gaming industry with 84 million consoles sold. A big feature, according to the original marketing, was the Xbox Connect, which was the answer to the Nintendo Wii, allowing gamers to react to a version of augmented reality that would display on the TV. The player's movements are captured by a live camera and the game reacts to the movement. It was an idea that sounded great but never really worked the way consumers were expecting. Regardless of the inconsistency of the Kinect, the bundled game with it, Connected Ventures, was the best seller of the Xbox 360, selling 24 million copies. Connected Ventures was an assortment of mini games you could play in multiplayer format or just by yourself. It is self-described as a full-body motion sports adventure. And really, as I said, it is just a collection of mini games to give you a gamut of what the Kinect has. This is probably the only game on the list I have not played. And despite my lack of interest, over a quarter of Xbox 360 owners had this title in their library. Edging out the seventh generation over the Xbox 360, but coming in a distant second to the Nintendo Wii, the PlayStation 3 sold 87 million units. Backwards compatibility was only for PS2 and only truly worked on the initial release of the console. This Blu-ray badass was the first of the console variety to support the technology. Game discs could now hold massive amounts of info for those who didn't have powerful internet connections or didn't have the patience yet for buying the online version. Beginning in its decade-long dominance in video games, Grand Theft Auto V was head and shoulders the best seller for PlayStation 3. This game really was the culmination of Rockstar's work in open world sandbox games. GTA V would also feature Grand Theft Auto Online, which if you're watching this video, you've likely played. 29.5 million copies of GTA V were sold on the PlayStation 3 alone. Grand Theft Auto V in its long run is second all time in games sold at 200 million copies. Second only to Minecraft. If you've never played this game, I personally recommend it. And I am one of the fools who has paid for it on every single console that I've owned. GTA V changed up the very formula of the Grand Theft Auto franchise by letting the player freely choose between three different characters throughout the game. Yes, some missions were locked to a character, but there was still an amazing amount of freedom. GTA V also featured three different endings, depending on a choice players make at the end. One of the best games I've ever played, and on the PlayStation 3, it sold 29.5 million copies. There was some controversy with the 2013 Xbox One rollout, from gamers not wanting to always have to be online, to others despising the idea that they wouldn't be able to sell their physical games afterwards due to the company's digital rights management philosophy. Xbox backtracked and was able to roll out the Xbox One with a dip in sales. The largest estimates have the Xbox One, the S, and the X consoles selling a combined 58 million units in their lifetime. According to multiple sources, GTA V holds the mantle of most Xbox One copies sold. Wikipedia holds that PUBG Battleground is the best-selling game, but a further analysis shows that a number of downloads were after the game went free to play at the end of 2021. Battleground is definitely worth a mention despite being a free game. Although not the very first of its kind, a lot of gamers credit PUBG for popularizing the Battle Royale formula, and its dominance on the Xbox One is unquestionable. But regardless of PUBG, GTA V has to go down as one of the most influential games of our time. Getting remastered on three consecutive generations of consoles and continually showing up on the top of the charts is amazing and stands to how great this game really is. PlayStation 4 also came out in 2013 and featured similar streaming options to help gamers broadcast their own content. It featured a similar AMD APU than the Xbox One, and AMD confessed that the PS4 version was the most powerful APU 
they developed to that day. Maybe it was the raw power or the 4K resolution, but PlayStation 4 wound up selling over double that of the Xbox One, as Sony would move over 117 million units while in production. The best-selling game on the PS4 was Grand Theft Auto... No, just kidding. GTA 5 was right behind the top game, however. Insomniac Spider-Man sold over 22 million copies on PlayStation 4, one of my personal favorite games of all time also. Spider-Man felt like a true superhero adventure from beginning to end. The action was fast-paced and jam-packed. There was seemingly endless missions to take on or crimes to thwart. The acting and cinematic scenes of the game made the whole title come to life and fully immerse the gamer. The writing was phenomenal and went deep into the lore of Spidey. The moves list was deep with a myriad of attacks and specials to chain together, some truly spectacular combos. It is not surprising that this game went on to have two successful sequels. In 2020, Xbox released the Xbox Series S and X. Microsoft wanted to get this console right and equipped it with a high-speed GPU, solid-state drives, and an ability to render 4K resolution games at 60 frames per second. This would also introduce the new standard along with Sony as there would be an option to have a no physical disk drive version of the console. So far, the Xbox series have sold a combined 21 million units. Now, I again want to point out that companies do not have to disclose sales figures, and it would seem with the recent litigation Microsoft went through, they are not eager to share all their info with the public. However, according to multiple sources, Elden Ring has sold over 3 million copies on the Xbox series and is leading the console in sales. Elden Ring is the culmination of From Software's years of making the Soul series one of the most revered franchises among gamers. The best parts of all Soul series combined into an intimidating and rewarding open world adventure. This game isn't for the weak of heart or for those looking to get a quick platinum trophy. Elden Ring is one of the most challenging open world adventures you are likely to come across, and with the latest DLC of the Erd Tree, the game just became even more difficult. With a deep lore and story inspired and worked on by George R.R. R. Martin, Elden Ring has enough going on outside the brooding difficulty to become its own TV series, and don't think that's not on the table. All in all, Elden Ring has sold a combined 25 million copies, placing it around 42nd all-time in best-selling video games in just two years. And for the Xbox series, Elden Ring has sold over 3 million copies. This leaves us with the PlayStation 5. Looking like the odds-on favorite for the ninth generation with a couple of years left, the PS5 is leading the pack with 59 million units sold. A good sight below 117 million sold by the PS4, but with both the Xbox Series and the PS5, the COVID pandemic hit the microprocessor market quite hard and stopped production of both consoles during their initial rollout. Forcing gamers like myself to squeeze as much life out of the previous generation until the market was normal again. When customers finally got their hands on the PS5, they were amazed at the speeds and the power. The AMD GPU installed on the PS5 was capable of a 4K resolution at 120 frames per second, doubling the Xbox series. The PS5 also pledged some backwards compatibility, although most of that was through its online store. With over 11 million copies sold on the PS5, Spider-Man 2 takes the top spot. Insomniac's Ratchet and Clank A Rift Apart was second with just under 4 million, and Elden Ring is clipping at Ratchet and Clank's heels with 3.6 million units sold on the PS5. Spider-Man 2 took what was great about the previous two Spider-Man games and combined it into an action-packed adventure where you can choose between your Spider-Man as you protect New York against Kraven the Hunter, Sandman, Mysterio, and Venom. This game adds more moves and better graphics along with an incredible story. The intertwined character arcs are incredibly well written and keep players coming back. 
The game doesn't throw away what you love from Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales. It takes all that along with the great acting and stories and makes a bigger, more encompassing version. You can fully lose yourself in the detailed New York City Insomniac created. There is even more crimes, missions, minigames, and map to explore than the first title, and you get to pick your Spider-Man. The action is amazing, the story is incredible, the acting and world that's created makes you feel like you are part of the story, and it has a new game plus mode if you're like me and never want to stop playing this game. Leading the way for the PlayStation 5, Spider-Man 2 with 11 million copies sold. Folks, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like more content like this. For even more content, go to twohatsandabeard.com or check out our YouTube page. Until next time, this is the Dove. I didn't know there were bears in these woods. Yeah.